Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. You know, it is um, Sunday morning. Uh, I dragged Lowry out of the sprints at Drupal Camp Brighton. Correct. How has the camp been for you so far? It's been very great. I, I guess it's the first time they are doing a camp in Brighton and they've got a good amount of people here and they have a good amount of international visitors from the Central Europe and it's been just great to see all the old friends because the, uh, as everybody knows, it's it was the Christmas time and New Year and everything. So I haven't seen my good Drupal friends for a few months now and I was missing them. So it was... It was very nice, right? You're a bit of a of a of a community hound. Uh, you, you appear at a, a an awful lot of community events. Yes, I do. I was a week ago in Drupal Camp Delhi, which was also a very good event, and it was such a huge honor to me to be there. And I'm so glad I had the opportunity to take part on that event. I I, I enjoy so much of being part of the community and taking part of different events. Right, so, and Drupal Camp Delhi in India, it's not their first event, but it seems to me that the Indian, that we in Europe and America are waking up to the fact that there are really exciting other parts of the Drupal community that we don't know yet, um, that Philippines, India, um, even China. Yeah. So, so what's the community like out in India? I think it's almost just like the community in here, but it's way larger than any other community I've ever seen in any, anywhere else. Because the community there is huge. Drupal Camp Delhi has more than 1,000 registrants for the event, which is a huge amount of people. That's like a NYC camp or a bad camp. Yeah, and they don't get any international visitors. It's mostly just the local people there. And I think that is really weird why people don't go there because it's really easy to get there actually from Europe and other places. And for me personally, I, I think that it's worth visiting. It's something that you can, you should, uh, you should do. It's an, it's experience that I, I probably will remember forever because Indian people, they are just amazing. It, they are so friendly and easy going and. Like all the things I thought before I was going there was completely wrong and all the thoughts completely changed when I actually got there. So what can we learn from the Indian Drupal community? I think there's a lot we can learn, especially about the community, the, 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 what they are thinking about community, because they are very community minded people. They, they, they appreciate community and Drupal a lot because Drupal creates possibilities for the uh, uh, people there. And VJC uh, is a good, a good example of a person who has got options to get out of the small village in India because of Drupal. Now he's living in London. Right, okay. So that kind of good examples in India empowers people to take part in, in community because they believe that it can create great future for people there. And I, I think that people in the Drupal community there are satisfied. Not everyone wants to move to London, but they, they, they get new opportunities even in the India. They can move to the big cities and... The, you know, the open source story is so powerful. And I think we sometimes get very much caught up in where we are, the phase we're in, um, you know, working for growing companies, making large projects for large companies, but, and, you know, helping them communicate and fulfill their mission. But the, 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 the fact that open source software is accessible, that there's you know, enough material so you can really learn it uh, without having to ask permission, really em can empower anyone who can at least get to an internet access point and a computer and get started, right? Yeah. And nowadays, getting to the internet is becoming easier and easier. Yeah. And that, that was one of the th uh, things I heard from an uh, other friend. He's not doing Drupal. But uh, why the open source is so big in India is that it's 
uh, available for everyone and almost everyone in India has uh, internet and a computer. So for that reason, they, uh, they, they usually start learning open source because the most easiest way to start learning anything when you are starting to learn something. And uh, yeah, that, that is the reason why I guess the open source is getting bigger and bigger all the time because India has huge amount of people there. And if the people are getting excited of learning new things, they, they see the possibilities the, on the career and everything and the easiness of actually learning, learning that. Okay, I'm really, really looking forward to to getting to know that community better. I'm, it's it's very it's very interesting to me. Yeah, it was very interesting to also hear that they are actually gonna build DrupalCon in oh. India, and that is one more example of that how serious uh, we are now taking India oh. inside our community. I'm really looking forward to that. Yes, me too, and I'm. I hope that it will change what people think about India and how easy they realize how easy it's to access and probably if they can probably they would get more international people even to the Drupal camps because mm. for me it was only 6 hours flight from Helsinki to Delhi it was like really easy if I fly to Spain it's 4 and a half hours so it's almost the same to go there wow. than the the your some european cities so let's say if I go to Barcelona, it's almost the same as going there. So I have no reason to not go there. Sure, absolutely. Especially because of the events there are so great. All right, everybody take note. It's not so far away. We should go and meet these people. Yeah. So how did you discover Drupal? I actually discovered Drupal uh, back in 2009, I guess. First, I heard it from a friend. I used to first work a Facebook uh, competitor that was in a, uh, that was a Finnish competitor, mostly Finnish users. I used to build layouts. I was a front end developer there, and then one of the other guys who was doing the same job uh, started building a Drupal. Actually, he's now working for Wundercrowd, and uh, then I realized that uh, he was a cool guy. I was like, yeah, Drupal sounds cool, and. Then I started just doing some really weird stuff using Drupal. I, I was horrible. I was just hacking everything to the templates and just like that. But Drupal seemed cool because there was good a good, good amount of tutorials for Drupal available. There was Drupalize Me, I guess, or some 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 something like that. I, I'm not sure. It, it might have been the Node once. Well, yeah, Node One did a lot of free training material. Yeah. Um, but before Drupalize Me, Lullabot was already producing training videos too. Yeah, I don't remember what which service it was, but there was one some really really good service. I was looking the videos from there, and then I started uh, figuring out out how I should do the things. And what made you stick with Drupal? Why are you still doing Drupal now? Because of the easiness of selling Drupal, I guess. Because I found job immediately. That was the 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 thing that changed. I, I just, um, I started building websites as a freelancer and there was a huge amount of people looking for Drupal developers. And then I was like, yeah, why, why not? If I can get that easy, easy, easily work. And it was actually quite easy to provide services by building Drupal for the, for the customers by them because of the good amount, because of the good documentation and everything. And at, at some point, I was thinking of moving somewhere else, but then I went to my first DrupalCon in Prague and it changed my my thinking of Drupal. And then I started uh, thinking that Drupal is more than just a technology. It's like uh, one big family we are. And there I met first time my uh, good friends, Ruben Tejero, Arte Jero and, uh, and, uh, and others. So at this point, you've contributed a lot to Drupal 8. Can you compare Drupal when you got started, which I guess was Drupal 6? Yes, Drupal 6. To what you've been helping to build in Drupal 8? I think every, there's a lot of things changed, especially I'm, I'm working uh, usually as a front-end developer, and Drupal has been a very back-end heavy community. And that is one of the biggest things for that's changed for me that uh, the front end developer has bootstrapped themselves into the community and they have the the possibility to 
actually uh, build the team layer the way they want to have it. And uh, I think that is the biggest change for me, that, that there's also other perspectives than the ones that the backend developers have. And I think it's very important for Drupal to, to secure the growth in the future, because um, I think teaming is one of the first things people usually try when they, when they start building a new site. That's, that's what I did when I started. And that's how many people get started. And for that reason, the experience of starting building a team should be as good as ever possible. Mm. And for that reason, it's very important to me. The Drupal community has become incredibly welcoming to new users and new developers. And in the last few years, a real culture of mentoring and nurturing new users has sprung up. And you're certainly a very, very active mentor. How did you go from your first DrupalCon a couple of years ago to being uh, a mentor now and really influencing, helping so many other people? I think when I when I got started, the mentoring experience, the, the experience of, of being mentored wasn't the best still because everything wasn't, the things were not taught so well. And I just wanted to be part of that to just ensure that we get new people inside there. And how I, how I got started to be a mentor was that I, I started organizing local sprints in Finland and there was no one who could mentor anyone. So basically I just, uh, stepped ahead and said, okay, I can do it. And then I had to learn new things. I wrote the articles, yes, City has written online. And yeah, I was like, yeah, I can do this. I, I, I might not be the, I, I might not know everything about Triple Eight, but I, I know these documents now and I know what should I say in the particular situations and I can provide help to people. And that's how I got started in mentoring. What, I also think that mentoring is one of the most important values we have in our community. And it's one of the, the reasons why we are as successful as we are, because uh, new people are, are the power of the community. We have to ensure the, that the community keeps going all the time. And the fact is that there's people leaving all the time because, you know, there is a situation in their lives changes. They get family and they, they burn out, they, whatever, just, People leave for some reason and we need new people to the community and we need more people all the time if you want to crouch. Yep. Uh, and I think that is the solution instead of trying to get the, the uh, pro contributors working more instead of getting more people inside the community. So, so you think a, a broader c contributor community yeah. is probably more powerful than, uh, than, a, than a deeper one? Yes. And I think, I think it's the solution for making Drupal grow faster, just to get more new people inside. So what are you most excited about in Drupal 8? Of course, the team system. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm mo most excited, but I think there is also other things that makes me excited is that everything is responsive. We have new, new way of thinking the front end that is like in Drupal 7, we used to think that we, we have to have technologies inside there. We have to provide technologies for people. I think in Drupal 8, what helps me a lot is that we don't have any more technologies inside Drupal core. Instead, we provide the tools for people to use their own technology. So, and that is one of the things I'm actually fighting at the moment when I'm working in Drupal 7, that I have to just remove everything that Drupal is providing and replace it with something new. And for that reason, I think that um, starting building new projects using Drupal 8 now would be be really, really nice. I think that it's like Drupal has always been the solution to build something, not not the solution for something. And uh, I think that way we are becoming even more Drupal. We are going forward with uh, flexibility to give the right tools for people instead of giving the solution out of the box. It's very hard when I when I talk with the people who are building sites using WordPress because they are completely different things for me uh, and. I don't remember who used to say that, but someone said that uh, if you want to build site, you can build it using WordPress. But if you want, if you want to build WordPress, you should do it. In Drupal. Using, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the Drupal 8 cycle, I've been really interested and really happy to meet a lot of new people because we've adopted 
components from the Symphony 2 framework. We've taken in all sorts of other libraries. And now it's amazing to watch, you know, Drupal contributions flow out into other communities yeah. and to see, you know, Symphony developers coming to our events. Yeah. How, do you, what's, how do you feel about 2015 and, and, and what's going on? I think that is a one really nice thing. That is the power of the open source. And we should cooperate even more with the other open source communities. And one of the biggest things I, want, I, I would like to do this year is that I would like to help WordPress implement their, their team system to be as similar as possible with Drupal. So that way we could uh, get the Ver, uh, WordPress teamers to build Drupal, Drupal sites, Drupal front end. Um, Attention WordPress, Laurie is coming for your front end. <laughs> yeah, and I've been actually looking already how we could integrate Twig into WordPress. Wow. And um, yeah, that would be really nice because then we, we would have the same kind of technologies in both. And I think both parties would get something out of that kind of co cooperation. What is your favorite thing about Drupal? My favorite thing about Drupal is people. And uh, yeah, that's definitely what it is, people. What word best describes Drupal? I think it's um, that's a good question. I don't know the word in English, but it's like uh, maybe you can tell me the word and we can do it again. It's like um, tell me the word in Finnish. <laughs> uh, Maybe it's the yhteisöllisyys. It's like uh, the community-minded people that want to do things together. Uh, uh, one of the one of the things that is something that no one else can understand out of, outside of the Drupal com community is that in Finland we are building projects together, and there's like friendships beyond business. That's that's what I maybe that that would be. That's not one word, but that's what I could say about Drupal community to to describe how, how the things are, at least from my perspective. And that's just one of the reasons why we are as good as we are, because uh, when we do something uh, together, we are way much more powerful than when we are alone. Because and that's what, they, that's what I say in Finland is that we shouldn't compete against each other because there is the real enemy outside somewhere, somewhere else and we should compete against them. Thank you so much for all your contributions and for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you. 